Why is Nike completely abandoning its factories in China? I'd even say, why are all the biggest American, and not even just American, but Western multinationals in general, leaving what we've long called the factory of the world to go elsewhere? This applies to Adidas, Apple, or even Microsoft. Almost all brands from various industries are involved. If you've been paying attention, you've probably noticed that the sneaker world is not spared from this change. Quite the opposite. Just take the last pair of sneakers you bought and put it in front of your eyes. Oof, what the hell is that smell, my guy? <laughs> Well, beyond the atrocious smell, seriously, you need to wash those. You've probably noticed that on the labels inside your sneakers, you see less and less made in China and more made in Vietnam, Indonesia, or even India. You can check most of your pairs. Made in China is becoming increasingly rare. At Nike, this production origin is reserved for a few restricted models. So you might wonder, why? Is it because of China's counterfeiting policies that brands no longer want to work there? Is it simply a matter of cost and they're going where it's cheaper? Or could it be something even more complex, like geopolitics? politics in a backdrop of a trade war between China and the United States, pushing American companies to abandon the Chinese ship before it's too late. Was that Beijing? New video! After talking about the price of your sneakers, the materials in your sneakers, or even the creases in your sneakers, today, let's discuss the origin of your kicks. In the collective imagination, when we talk about sneakers, we inevitably talk about made in China. However, at the very beginning of the sneaker era, it wasn't the case. Not at all. In the 80s, China wasn't a player in the game. And apparently today, China is slowly losing its status as the number one sneaker manufacturer. But before we dive into why brands are leaving China today, let's provide some historical context for the last 60 years. Fucking of course. For those who've been following Following the channel, you know that 40 years ago, Adidas or Puma were still making the majority of their sneakers in Germany. Some pairs like the Adidas Forum were even made in France. Yes, of course. Very well. <laughs> the expertise in sportswear shoes was concentrated in countries with big sportswear brands. We had sportswear shoe factories in Germany because of Adidas and Puma, just as in the United States with New Balance, in France with the Coke Sportif, and in England with Umbro, and so on. This was an established order for decades until the arrival of a certain Phil Knight, who would completely disrupt everything after realizing that they could make more or less the same pairs in Asia and sell them for half the price of their American competitors. At the time, there were real brands, in quotes, made in Europe or the United States, which were quite expensive. Well, relatively expensive for that time, you get the idea. Everything else was seen as cheap and unsuitable for performance. In the 60s, Phil Knight would create the very first Western sportswear brand exclusively made in Asia, and initially, he would manufacture his pairs in South Korea. All the big brands looked down on him, thinking of it as a brand that would never convince real athletes with its Korean and garbage shoes. However, they soon realized that outsourcing production to Asia was a massive advantage. So, by the 70s, Puma, Adidas, Reebok, and the whole gang started producing some of their pairs in South Korea. At this point in history, China wasn't even on the map. The reason? A certain Mao Zedong of the Chinese Communist Party was not too keen on the idea of doing business with the rest of the world. He believed that China could become a great power without having any dealings with capitalist scum. In short, he wanted nothing to do with Nike, Adidas, or Puma. We don't talk! Okay, get the f out of here! But this new path that brands had found in Korea would soon be disrupted at the end of the 70s. The brands faced a serious problem. South Korea, which was initially an underdeveloped country with cheap labor, was rapidly developing in terms of education and economy. In just a few years, Korean society underwent a radical transformation. All of this was thanks to the invention of bubble tea, which to this day accounts for 64% of South Korea's GDP. Nah, just kidding. I'm just saying shit, but no one's gonna notice since y'all already skipped the video. <laughs> It was thanks to a series of economic reforms that allowed South Korea to have the fastest growing economy in the 70s. While it was great news for the Korean people, with rising living standards and wages, it was probably the worst thing that could have happened to Nike. Costs were increasing year after year, and they were aware that the era of Koreans working for pennies was over. They needed to exploit another country, and all the sportswear giants left Korea for a new promised land that had recently opened up to the world, China. For those who grew up in the 80s and 90s, there's a scene you've probably seen on TV quite a bit. Workers staging protests because big bosses decide to relocate to China. At the same time, you could understand them. With the new leader, Deng Xiaoping, China came up with an aggressively new approach. Their goal? To build the world's largest factory at the expense of Western multinationals. To attract companies from all over the world, they offered highly competitive labor, vast areas of land for industrialization, insane tax incentives, and a fairly, let's just say, 
flexible legal framework. Basically, as long as foreign companies invested in China and contributed to the construction of their giant factories, they could literally pay zero taxes and do pretty much whatever they wanted. Going to China meant saving tens or even hundreds of millions of euros. In the world of business, producing there was the most logical choice. It was just common sense. If you didn't go, you were dead in the water against your competitors, but from the public's perspective, people saw these big bosses as money-hungry monsters. Well, considering how they stuff their pockets, I admit, I might have done the same. Tell them to bring me my money. Yeah! We joke, we joke, but when you buy on AliExpress, where everything is five times cheaper with false customs declarations to dodge VAT, you're pretty much doing what these big businessmen did on a smaller scale. You go where it's cheaper, even if it ruins the local economy. The Chinese quickly realized that in a capitalist world, it's all about the money and nothing else. They would literally crush the competition with their prices. Initially, it was just cheap, but the products were really disastrous, which is probably why the pejorative connotation of made in China still exists 40 years down the line. Just imagine, the first Jordan 1s released until the late 80s were still made in Korea because the Chinese were still far behind at that time. But soon, China would develop in terms of technology, and around the 2000s, they became the most advanced country in sneaker production by quite a margin, actually. But what's happening today? Why are 51% of Nike sneakers now made in Vietnam, and only 21% are made in China? Have they lost their position? as global sneaker leaders? No, they haven't. They're still number one and still by a large margin. That's why even though Nike started manufacturing most of its pairs in Vietnam or Indonesia, you'll notice that they're more technologically advanced or premium products in heavy quotation marks are still made in China, whether it's the $300 Alpha Fly 2s or absolutely all the Jordans, except for the budget versions like the Jordan 1 Mid. The problem for Nike, once again, is that the same thing that happened in Korea 50 years ago is happening in China. China has developed developed rapidly, with the average weight literally tripling in the past 10 years. But it's not just that. During the same period, since the arrival of a certain Xi Jinping in 2013, China has slowly closed its doors to the West and adopted a more nationalist strategy. Before 2013, Nike was number one in China, just like in the rest of the world. But now, just like Baidu over Google or WeChat over, well, every social media out there, most Chinese people are starting to wear X-Step, Li Ning, or Anta. All the advantages China graciously offered to foreign companies have been a thing of the past for the past 10 years. The Chinese government has ended all these benefits since 2013 to give an edge to Chinese companies in the local market. In short, for the past 10 years, foreign brands haven't had as many concrete incentives to stay in China. Salaries were no longer the lowest in Asia, and tax, administrative, or customs advantages were no longer applicable. It's over the last decade that this transition to Vietnam and Indonesia has gradually taken place, even though Nike was already producing pairs in Indonesia and Vietnam on a smaller scale, but now, we're really starting to see it. Finding sneakers made in China among sneaker giants is becoming almost complicated. You get it, this exodus from China is yet another downward leveling of our product. Lower quality, less skilled labor, and obviously much lower pay. But as explained in our previous video, despite continuously skimping on quality and almost bordering on slavery, it doesn't stop them from charging 20 bucks more for their air forces. They don't give a shit. I'm here to tell you right now. We don't care. But this flight from China isn't just about the prices. Right now, we're in the midst of an atrocious trade war between the Americans and the Chinese. Relations are deteriorating year by year, and the two giants are throwing punches that have direct repercussions on businesses. What the Americans did to Huawei was quite insane. You realize that when you're a big Chinese brand and you're too dependent on the United States, it can end quite badly. Well, the reverse is just as true. Nike doesn't want to end up as collateral damage in the conflict, and it's better to avoid putting all your eggs in one basket, especially if that basket is Chinese. Don't worry, for now, China is still the official sneaker factory of the entire world, with more than 60% of the world's shoes being made there. Luxury brands like Balenciaga or Prada are increasingly adopting Made in China, but for entry-level sneakers, that's likely to change in the coming years. Just like previous generations were used to Adidas made in Germany at one point, and then the next generation had sneakers made in Korea, well, we might be the last generation to know about Nike sneakers made in China. When you consider that Chinese factory workers' salaries can range from $200 to over $600 a month, and in countries like India, you can see salaries as low as $70, a little over 100 euros in Indonesia, or less than $200 in Vietnam, you quickly grasp the crazy economics this represents for sneaker giants. And knowing them, they won't hesitate to cut costs, even the smallest pieces. Come, let me go, let me start off, boy, better know that's the team I'm part of. You man have, yo. Working your ass off the Tom Tom said I'm getting to my destination in four hours. I said, Tom Tom, look at the car, calculate that again, then take half off, cause the car's way too much. I breeze off with the lightest touch. I pedal for the brake, pedal for the accelerator, but no pedal for the clutch. 